All right, Capital Improvement Planning Committee, January 30th, 2024. First item is approval of meeting minutes from January 16th, 2024. I've read them, they look beautiful and succinct, and I would make a motion to approve. I second a motion. Let's go move on. All right. Don't have any virtual participants, so we can do roll call votes. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 All right. Or nothing. Take notes. This is how meetings are run. <laughs> All right. Um, next item review, discuss, and vote to prioritize capital project proposed funding in fiscal year 2025. We, uh, I mean, we consider the fire department. Yeah, we consider the fire department. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We asked for, you know, the committee asked for different various uh, pieces of information from people who submitted capital projects and more information about the uh, the air packs was requested and fire the entity is here with lots of stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. $200,000 air packs. Yes, sir. What does that get us? Uh, well, that would get us uh, 15 air packs. Um, I'll explain to you in just a moment what the air packs are and what they do. Uh, 20 face pieces, 30 air bottles, um, a rip bag, which is a rapid intervention team bag, like a rescue uh, bag, <clears throat> another uh, air pack specially made for that, and a charging station for the batteries. Um, the good news is that. I have been researching this for a few years because I've been putting in for quotes, um, putting in for uh, federal grants, trying to get this funded. Um, I've made it to the final round of selection every time, but we still haven't been, uh, been chosen. It's a highly competitive grant. It's a national, nationwide grant. Um, but the grant um, quote that I got last year was um, closer to um, 200 and um, Ten or two hundred twenty thousand um, dollars. That was based on their anticipated price increases. Um, good news is that the latest quote that I got was for one hundred ninety thousand dollars. So um, that same uh, amount of air per pack. Yeah. Like in the stores, they charge you less, and they yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So it's I mean that's the, the a quote for the same equipment. It's just that. Um, this is the, the actual retail price they're selling for right now. The last quote was for what they anticipated with the uh, price increases. There's been a huge amount of price increases. Um, as everybody knows, um, inflation has been very high in the in specialty equipment, like in the fire service. Um, the price of our air bottles um, that we need for these air packs have gone up. I think it's probably gone up 100% in the last 10 years. Um, Huge increases uh, every year. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of a, a quick history on these air packs, so you have some context. You know what I'm talking about, and then I'll explain to you um, some of the uh, pitfalls we're seeing with our current equipment. In the early days of uh, firefighting, we had what we call legacy um, furnishings at home. So most, most things were made out of natural materials, so wood, wool, cotton. Um, when you see pictures uh, of people fighting fires in the 30s and 40s um, running around, you know, with the, they might have had a coat, you know, and a hat on, and that's probably all the equipment that they had. Um, it's because the fires were a lot different then than they are now. The fires that we have now, um, everything in modern homes is um, all made out of synthetics. Everything is petroleum based. Basically, everything in this room is petroleum based and you look in a home, everything is synthetic petroleum based. Mm -hmm. When the stuff burns, it generates a ton of heat, much, much more heat than we saw in fires in the past. The fires grow much, much quicker. Um, and the smoke is um, much, much more toxic. Uh, some of the smoke is so toxic that one or two breaths of it can uh, knock you out and that's you know game over. Mm -hmm. So things have changed a lot from the time um, when uh, you know, my father or my uncle were firefighters versus um, now when I'm a firefighter. The so it's harder now than when your father was. Oh, much harder. I mean, we work much harder. We work much much harder. Yeah. Sure that's... Back in the uh, 
I think it was in the, um, probably the late seventies or early eighties when the town got their first air packs. <laughs> it's the first generation of air pack right here. Um, it looks fine to me. It looks fine to you. Yeah. Steel tank, steel pack, and you can see there's not a lot of support in it, not a lot of padding, and this was the mask, um, the very simple mask. Um, all the regulators were on here first and second regulator. It made going on and off of our air very difficult. Like scuba diving in a toxic and pretty much a toxic environment. Pretty much. Um, this is a 2,200 psi pounds per square inch bottle. The same as what we have now. The same pressure in the bottle. Um, most new bottles, most new systems that towns have are 4,500 psi. So you're putting more air into the same space. Mm -hmm. uh, benefit of that is you can either go with the same amount of air, the same volume of air in a smaller bottle, or more volume of air in the same size bottle. You can stay in longer. Lots of benefits. You can stay in longer. Potentially, you can do more work. Um, it can allow you more of a buffer for time to get out if something um, unexpected happens in a fire. What's the typical time length of time that a firefighter could work with a single bottle in a situation? It all depends on um, the stress load that they're under. So the, the amount of work, physical labor that they're doing um, and the external environmental stressors that they have. Um, if it's you know if it's really hot um, and you know your heart rate's up you know like 30 and 40 and you're doing hard work you're dragging a hose or you're pulling ceiling or something like that um, some people might get um, 20 minutes out of a bottle and somebody who's really experienced and has really good breathing control um, really physically fit might get 45 minutes out of a bottle that's generally the, the kind of window that we're looking at. So that was the uh, first generation of bottle. This is um, similar to what, um, this is actually one of the bottles that we had on the trucks when I first started in um, 1988, 89. Is that first generation device that you have here tonight still in use or it's kind of in your museum? This is uh, archived okay. for posterity so okay. we can explain to future generations. <laughs> Thank you, it's gonna be like, um, this is the next generation of pack that, the, that our fire department bought. It's made by the same company, Scott Air Pack. It's a 2200 PSI bottle, but you'll notice that this bottle um, is a composite bottle. It's a lot lighter. The frame um, has more uh, better suspension on it. It's more ergonomic. It means you can wear it longer and your body would get less fatigued on it. Mm -hmm. um, there's more features built into this. It had a uh, device in it called a pass device, which if we stop moving, for a prescribed period of time, it will start chirping and that chirping will turn into a loud beep and then a loud alarm so that if one of us was down in a fire somewhere, it would allow other people to find where we are because a lot of times we have zero visibility uh, in fires. What you're looking at here is one of the regulators for the bottle. Um, this is where the bottle hooks up. There's one gauge on the bottle itself and then there's another handheld uh, gauge that's attached to the um, to the pack here. This has a pass device integrated into it. That one had a pass device that was separate that we had to clip on, turn on and off manually. Um, this has uh, um, batteries in the pack itself um, for these uh, auditory alarms. And it also has batteries in the face piece um, that didn't bring, but the, the face piece has an amplifier and a voice amplifier that has batteries in it as well. Um, so those are something that we have to keep an eye on and replace. These bottles are good for um, 15 years. They have to be recertified periodically. That's something that we take care of. Um, this is what we're currently operating here. This pack is um, uh, 24 years old. Our packs range in age from I think they range in age from 23 to uh, about 28 years old. And how many packs in total do you possess? 15. 15. Yeah. And then I brought the, uh, another pack here. Just one of the like, packs we're looking at behind. It's an air pack from one of our neighboring communities. It's one of the latest generations of air packs. It's from a different manufacturer. Um, but more importantly, this is a 4,500 pound per square inch bottle. This has the same volume of air in it that that one does. 
but it's much more compact. Um, the bottle's lighter, but it also gives us more maneuverability in a tight space. Um, this pack has a lot of features built into it. Won't necessarily get into all of them because it's frankly, it might be a little overwhelming, but the um, electronics in this pack are all controlled by one rechargeable battery pack in the back here. Um, the battery pack, my understanding is warranty for 15 years, the same as the pack itself. So that's a, definitely a plus. Um, the gauge has both an analog and a digital gauge. That's the standard now. When we look at it, it makes it easier to read um, in low light situations. This particular pack has a thermal imager on it um, so that we can see in smoke and dark, like zero visibility with it. The packs that we're looking at um, replacing this with do not have a thermal imager in it. Um, we've opted to go with a separate um, imager just for cost savings and um, practicality and, and um, make things a little bit more. Um, What's your, how often you have to are those bottles inspected? Um, these bottles, um, I think they're good for seven years on their initial, um, and then it's um, every, I think it's every three years after that. Uh, we contract with the service to uh, recertify the bottles, they pressure test them. Um, we also contract with a company to service every air packs once a year. Uh, they test all the uh, different alarms on them to test the regulators to make sure they're flowing the right volume and the right pressure. Um, and they sign off on that for us. I got one of the books here for that. Um, so when I'm done talking, you're free to just come up and take a quick look and see the weight difference between the three of them and um, kind of feel the difference between them. Um, the NFPA has standards for air packs. Um, NFPA is a agency that um, has a sets of codes that apply to the fire service in particular. And there, these codes um, help us um, both protect ourselves and protect the public. The code that they have for the air packs um, is pretty, pretty specific as to the features that they want to see on them. And periodically that code gets revised, generally it's every three, sometimes four years. Um, our current air packs, like this one right here, is um, four generations behind I mean, uh, an NFPA standard. So with the improvements that they want to see, some of the changes that the NFPA makes, we can do upgrades to the packs. Um, ultimately, it kind of becomes cost prohibitive at some point where you're basically building a whole new pack um, to try and keep up with the standard. So there are several components to this, um, as well as the, the math that we use that have been upgraded to try and concurrent with the current NFPA. Um, codes and standards. Um, this pack passed its inspection. Um, there was two packs that didn't pass. Um, we've had those repaired. Those were for wear and tear at these um, shoulder harnesses. So those have been fixed. But they, um, you know, according to the, the report from the certification company, they no longer comply to NFPA standards. Um, and one of the reasons is because there's no heads up display on it. So this part of the regulator clips onto our face piece, our mask, and the new code says that we have to be able to look down inside of our mask and look at LED lights to see how much air is in the pack. So that if you're busy firefighting, um, you know, we try and avoid tunnel vision, but ultimately, you know, you're focused on the task that you're doing. And a lot of times people don't, take the time to stop what they're doing and look, look at an air pressure gauge to see how much air they have left. This is something that will give us a series of lights um, in our gate, in our face piece in the bottom corner and make it um, obvious to us when we're starting to run out of air. Um, you can see that this one here has uh, LED lights in here and those are the ones that you can see inside the mask. Different manufacturers have different ways of making it visible. Um, through the map there. Um, is there any um, either state or federal laws requiring an upgrade or is, is it the NFPA um, that's a good, says 
hey, yours are not in compliance, but we can't force you to upgrade. Right. So they can't force us to upgrade, but ultimately, um, when we fall too far behind on, on the standards, we become liable if there's a problem with that equipment or if there was um, a fatality or an injury on the fire front. Um, like most rules, the NFPA rules are really all based on case history and firefighter safety. Um, when there's a rule change or um, a guideline or a code change, it's generally because there's been something bad that's happened somewhere along the line. Um, there's lots of changes that happen over time. One of the changes in the phase piece is that they've they've uh, changed the way that the airflow um, runs through the mask so that the polycarbon lens um, melts at a higher temperature because it's being cooled by the air going through it. Um, we deal routinely on the theme of in fires. Uh, when you look at a, a room and contents fire, when everything inside the room is burning, it's gone to what we call flashover. Does anybody have any idea what kind of temperatures might be in that room? It can happen in three or four minutes in, under the right conditions. Take a while, I guess. Anybody? 800. 800. It can be over well over a thousand degrees. It can happen at like 1100 degrees. It's not uncommon. Um, the most vulnerable piece of our all of our clothing and all of our protection is the face piece, um, which will fail between four and five hundred degrees. The new NFPA standard is is five hundred degrees if there's air flowing through it. Uh, so this is like the the most vulnerable piece of our equipment. You know, our gear helps protect us from getting burned, um, but you know, if we can't breathe, then you're you're um, you're in trouble. Um, so I would, uh, I know that there were some some questions about moving this uh, out a little bit. I have put in for the, the grant, like I said, so I don't, I wouldn't be opposed to moving it out a year, but what I would try and uh, avoid doing is splitting it up over multiple years. The purchase, I mean. The purchase. You could put the finance. The financing I would be fine with, but the purchase, I would rather purchase them all at once um, for a couple of reasons. One of them is that, um, we don't want two different side bottles on the trucks and two systems that are not compatible. Um, it would be just too much error, error for uh, people that make a mistake or not be familiar with the equipment that they're wearing. Um, just to wrap things up, one of the other issues that we face now is that we are, um, I think we're the only ones in any of our surrounding communities that are utilizing 2200 PSI bottles. Everybody else is at 4,500 PSI. And where that really comes into play is um, interoperability. When we do an emergency, you know, a big fire, there's going to be other agencies there. And if we're filling our bottles, we can either fill them with an air truck or we would send somebody to another fire station that has a filling station to charge to fill these bottles. And if somebody's not careful or if they're distracted and they try and fill, a 2200 PSI bottle, it's a 4500 PSI, which is what the regulators are typically set at because the other 18 communities have um, 4500 PSI bottles. Then there's a burst disc in here, which will blow out before the tank lets go. So you don't have a catastrophic <laughs> explosion. There's a safety issue, there's an interoperability issue um, as well. I think 14 out of the 18 surrounding communities are operating uh, 4,500 PSI bottles from this particular vendor. Um, if we have the same vendor and the same manufacturer and the same pressure bottles, if we're at a fire scene and we need more bottles, we can just borrow them from somebody else instead of trying to inventory a lot more bottles. Uh, yeah, anybody have any questions? Yeah, so you have 15 of the old stuff, I'll call old style bottles. Sure. Yep. And this request is to purchase 15 of the new style bottles. Correct. More than 15. So it's a one for one replacement. One for one, correct. Yeah. Replacement. Yeah. You spoke to the interoperability issue, which I was, you were anticipating sure. one of the questions. Um, what happens to the old bottles? Um, you know, the, the old, they really don't have very much value. Um, some a lot of times the vendor that we purchase from will take them back and give us uh, some kind of a very very nominal credit just to take them off our hands. Yeah. Basically, um, it's hard. It would be hard for us to sell them 
um, both because it's not a big market for them, but also because you don't want to accept any liability for for uh, a life safety issue like a product like that. I've seen old packs for sale um, in you know fire trade magazines um, for you know hundreds of dollars a piece. Are there significant additional costs not accounted for in this budget request associated with disposing of the old units? No. Yeah. So that wouldn't be a significant cost. That would not be, no. Okay. All right. So just strictly about purchasing these 15 new items and not uh, associated. And that would allow us uh, one pack for every seated position in our fire apparatus, which is what the federal government runs for guidelines. Um, and also, um, when we get um, rated by ISO, Mm -hmm. The fire department gets rated by ISO, and that's what our insurance rates are based on, and it helps with our main, you know, our industries, you know, helps with their insurance ratings as well. Um, one of the things they look at is how many fire trucks we have um, and what capabilities those trucks have. So if we have a truck that doesn't have a full range of equipment on it and it's not ready to roll out the door as a functioning piece of fire apparatus it's considered a reserve piece of fire apparatus mm -hmm. and it no longer really counts the same as a frontline piece of apparatus if that makes sense or not but that's one of the reasons why we're yeah one of the, one of the, one of the reasons why we're, we're really going for one for one um right. swap with them is it typical for other communities to have a small backup supply of extras. I mean, I hear the one for one, which is minimal. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is. You know, larger departments would certainly have um, some extra air packs, but they would have probably have them um, on a rescue truck. Um, they would have extra air bottles on a rescue truck as well. Um, I don't see the need for us to really at this point have extra, more more than what we're asking for because if we go with a system that's similar to surrounding communities. Um, then we would have some redundancy built in there. So how would you summarize the, the key risks to your firefighter team today to continue to use the old packs? Well, um, the last fire that we went to, uh, mutual aid a couple weeks ago, uh, this pack was taken out of service because, um, interesting that you asked me, because that's what the tag is on here. This is what we call a purge valve on here. Yeah. Um, it's something that we can use to flush air through the mask, either to get rid of condensation inside, or if you don't have a good seal and you need it to do that to, you know, to get out to fresh air. Um, this purge valve right here um, is leaking. Mm -hmm. So the bottle, um, even when you're not breathing, it's blowing air out through here. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, the Work that we were doing at that fire in South Carolina Falls. We had a crew in the basement and they were pulling smoldering material from the basement. Um, well supervised, we had a lot of people there and um, good visibility. Uh, so, this particular firefighter recognized there was a problem, was able to come out, and we were able to swap it out for one of the other packs that we had in the truck. Um, but it's the kind of thing that, you know, if you were deep inside of a building, and suddenly you realize that you have half as much air as um, the other two people that are inside with you. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a life safety issue. So it could, I mean, ultimately we're looking at, you know, death is really the worst, worst, case, worst case scenario. But as these packs get older, um, there's gonna be more and more problems with um, individual components mm -hmm. um, failing. Yeah. Um, typically um, these packs, most agencies are replacing them every 15, maybe 20 years. Firefighter safety. Yeah, firefighter safety, not compliant <clears throat> with current NFPA codes. Yeah. Lack not, of co modern features to sure. the fire. Not, uh, not uh, compatible with mutual aid systems and surrounding community. And ultimately, I, you know, I hate to put it in, in terms of you know dollars and cents too, but if, if there was a... Um, you know, a, a fire ground fatality or a fire ground injury of a firefighter, one of the first things that, that gets looked at is, are you compliant with your testing? Are you compliant with current standards? And if we're behind the standard, then all of a sudden it's might be a big liability for the town as well. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely- I think we're looking at financial liability under the 
yeah. the IOD was. So, For sure. But I mean, $200,000 will look small compared to the absolutely. lifetime benefits that the non might pay out. Last yeah. question. Assuming that this is funded, can these, the necessary quantity of these units be acquired expeditiously and put into operation? Um, yeah, the, the uh, lean time um, for the bottles is anywhere from uh, probably six weeks to, um, you know, eight or 10 weeks okay. from what I've seen when we bought bottles in the past to replace them. Um, most of the bottles that I've been re replacing, I've been buying under uh, grants the last couple of times where I've been able to secure grants, grant funding to replace those bottles. Um, excuse me, but the packs, I don't know exactly. I would say the lead time is not what it used to be because nobody inventories. It's just in time manufacturing. It's kind of standard. So we might be waiting six months or nine months or something like that. But um, that's kind of what, throughout industry wide, that's what we're seeing with, uh, um, with lead times for, for things. And once you acquire these, it's relatively straightforward to train your team to use them and use all the new features. Certainly, we would. Um, what we would do is have the the manufacturer rep come out and do an in service for everybody. We'll train on the new packs, so everybody's familiar with those, and we'll train one of our firefighters or one probably one of our officers um, as a um, technician. So we have one person in the department that can identify problems, and if there's something that's relatively simple to, to fix or repair that we can place those um, on our own. Um, yeah. what I need to hear. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. If anybody wants to take a moment, take a look at one of these, you're more than welcome to uh, put your hands on it. You would be amazed at the uh, the weight of that pack compared to that pack. And they're, I mean, they're really looking at three generations of technology there. Take your word for yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank That's you. Awesome. Appreciate it. Um, how, as a matter of procedure, are we going to do this and then prioritize as we go, or go through everything and then prioritize? I would suggest we just start going down the list, and yeah. everybody has the extra information. That, <laughs> then we just talk about it that way and prioritize. So why don't we discuss and prioritize this item and then go back to the top? Okay. Is it, is it going to be anything other than A or? I would not get for an answer. Convince that the, it meets all the A level criteria uh, prioritization schedule. Yeah, the only question here is have to pay for it. Which is not our concern. Which is not our concern. Right. Our concern. Right. Our concern. Right. right. That's Good law, I did that. That's why I say clearly an A, right. and then the then, we, <laughs> then we then we kick it over to the finance committee and they solve that problem. Okay. All right. Yeah, I would agree. A. All right. Back to the topic. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Did we? Did we? Did that? Did we vote? Everyone's agreed on an we'll A. We'll at the this. end. I think we'll do yeah. a list. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. Uh, double lane batting cages. Last year. If you want me to read out what we did last year for some of these, yeah, yeah. So last year it was the same thing. Yeah. And it was cheaper, but I guess. Yeah, I guess the one thing that's different is it doesn't exist anymore. I guess that's the one difference we've seen yeah. last year and last year. The old one's been taken down. I don't know if that means anything, but. That's good. So I was somewhere between a C and a B on this, the, the B being um, high priority versus work nearly worthwhile. I would be persuaded that it's B given that there are no existing facilities to provide this function. Uh, and Hurley Field is used not just by greatly people, but in it, it is a a regional resource with regional narrowly defined, which could, in my mind, raise it from a C to a B. I might, I might 
put out there the idea of prioritizing it as a B, but I could be persuaded to lower it to a C. I need your other I, viewpoints. I think it should be a B at this point. There is, is it no batting cage? I would rule out A. It is not an urgent. It is not an A. Uh, but I, I think that would be for this. And I will note that I don't think we got answer. Really, we didn't quite get answers to our questions about this. Um, I mean, look, look at the criteria for B. These projects typically address deteriorated facilities. Well, is the facility so deteriorated? It yes, eliminated. And the other thing too is they could turn around and, and try to resubmit with surface there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, the, they could resubmit with you mean with grass? Yeah, right. Oh, to get CPA fund. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, they got an answer that they're not going to get it that way. Well, is there another way? Yes, let's try it. So well, I, I but e even that is just uh that's why I would say three thousand out of a twenty thousand dollar yeah project. The the rest of it seems to qualify for CPA. Okay. So I think implicit in us giving anything a rating versus not recommending it is that we at least looked at the plan and the cost and made some judgment that it's feasible and of a reasonable cost in our opinion. And if we and, and we would not recommend it if we didn't think they had a good plan or that it wasn't worth doing or this was excessively expensive or something like that. When I look at this, I mean I I could pick it twenty thousand dollars for some batting cages, but I don't know that my that would make a huge difference. I would say to see. You, I, I would say to see also. I think it's worthwhile. I think it's it's a good project, yeah. but uh, I would not. Call it, I would call it a high priority project for the town. I mean, I hope there's money available for it. I hope there's a way to finance it. But uh, yeah, it's just make it a see. Okay. Everybody's Are you here. a non-voting member of yep. this yep. situation? Yeah. Because you're awful quiet always. I know this in situation. I'm a non-voting member. You're the choreographer moderator. No, I've got no problem calling it a C. Yeah. yeah. All right. I can live with a C. Yellow barn repairs. We didn't really have any more questions about this. I guess what I would say is. I mean, I would. I was between an A and a B, um, and I guess what I want, and maybe Nicholas. Nicholas is a little, you know, a little conflicted in this, and maybe at least put a quote in. Yeah. But um, I'd like you to make the case that it's urgent. Like, if there's a risk of this building, I mean, this is based on some risk of a, an imminent failure of the building. That would be far more costly if delayed. Like I just want to kind of hear, like, right? Why do we need to do this now? I think, as I said at our, our last meeting, I haven't actually looked at it in a while. Like maybe it was early last summer. Okay. Um, and I wasn't looking at it with the eye towards how quick is this going to collapse? Right. Uh, right. In general, buildings don't fall down quickly; they fall down slowly. <laughs> right. And so, we'll um, start by not being able to open the barn doors. That somebody will look at it and say, "Okay, yeah. it's settling on us. Now we got to do something." Right. I'd say a B. You would say a B. Yes. So you see, it's not urgent. Not urgent, but yeah, I guess yeah, I'm, yeah, no, you know, no, I. Yeah. No, nothing we've gotten indicates any urgency. So no, it's high priority, but not urgent. Yep. That's I'm okay. fine with that. Yeah. Okay. We don't want to be. A B. Installation of electrical subpanels slash installation of mini split heat pumps because they are they need to happen together. Happen together. Yeah, that's that's we wrap those two together. So we're talking. I I feel as though your, your questions weren't really answered by Bill on this subject. The I sort of followed the email chain. Uh, so, one answer is about being able to heat the classroom. 
Yeah, that didn't address the the procurement issue. No, but address the boiler. Oh yeah, the the dollar limit or something like that. Yeah, right. before it becomes more involved to do acquisition. Yeah. So uh, actually, I did have a, a a quick discussion with Darius about it. Okay. And it, it this is meeting's being recorded, so I got what I say, but. Um, it just seemed like it was a preference that they that they continue down the same path with the vendor uh, that they've been using. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's that's uh, I mean, th there's nothing in procurement laws that that would say, oh, your project's over hundred thousand, you you know, you can't do it. You know, it is possible to do it. When pro it's possible to do projects that exceed hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. There's a different process you need to follow. Right. Um, it's there's some more administrative work to do it, and you may not get the same vendor, but it's possible. Um, but their preference is that it would you know, that they would split them, obviously from what they had said. But to me, that's that's not a uh, it's not an overwhelmingly great reason to make decisions, you know, mm -hmm. just based off the of procurement method because one slightly, you know, slightly more saves streamlined a little, saves a little time, you know. Right, it's like. Um, well, if they if they broke down anything, it would have to be that the mini splits, and you take half of that, you're still talking eighty six thousand. So. The difference of 86 to 107 if you do it straight. Yeah, yeah. Because you got to do the sub down complete. Right. Once right. they break that up. I thought the 63 was for just the first phase of the mini splits. Yeah. It's 63. Yeah. It would be 63 this year, 63 the following year. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. that's already broke. Broke down. If you want to try to break it down more, Oh, uh, I don't know how yeah, many mini splits. In, in really, yeah, yeah. No, from a procurement think. standpoint, you're supposed to look at total project cost, right? Not whether you can split them right. Yeah. Right. Period. So I think the point Dan made is that before you can do any more of these mini splits, you have to do the electrical sub half. Yeah. So right. and the we know that many there are already a bunch of mini splits more that come. So. Good. You might as well do the electrical sub panels. Now the question is again. Well, you the A versus B. Panel, so no. You right. had to buy a size panel to handle the whole thing. Sure. Right. Okay. Right. It's right. Like one time shot. Right. So it's clearly to me above a C. Yeah. But now, the, how do we discriminate between making it A or B? Well, the urgency would come in or not based on the rebate issue. Yeah. If yeah. we think. You're going to lose rebates by not doing it. Yeah. It becomes an A. It yeah. becomes urgent. If that is not a consideration as much, right. then and we don't know. Okay. And we and we don't know. That link was not live in the email. Oh, well, it was I, forward. Right. So I, I can forward you the link. I, I did click through it. It it does mm -hmm. not. It didn't. Uh, it didn't answer all the questions about. We we what? know the 2024. The current one will go away. But we don't know what the ones will be. Right. 25, 26. Right. They haven't set the rate of the have, They have uh, vaguely worded goals and uh, goals and objectives for the yeah. those next three years. But it doesn't say like it's going to be this amount. For, right. Right. You'll probably see how many are going to bite for this one. And then I guess I would put them, I'd put them at an A. Uh, for that reason to grab the rebate. Yeah. Yeah. And we think it will get half the half of it installed with the current rebates. And if the rebates get smaller, we'll, we'll wish we had done more. And if they get bigger, we'll think we could have waited, but uh, kind of splits the difference. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we want to risk losing the $4,000, whatever it is per unit. Right? Yeah, right. That's huge. Yeah. yeah, I was sort of thinking of a model of putting the electrical sub panels as an A, because you got to get that done. Putting the first phase of the mini splits also as an A for the reason you just outlined, Nicholas, and then putting phase two of the mini splits, which is not requested here, right, so as a B. Well, it's on. So the question is, do we? Can we? 
use our I yeah. know, authority yeah. to yeah. accelerate and suggest to yeah. the finance committee that they consider yep. as a priority yep. B accelerating phase two and doing phase one and phase two in the same year to capture all of the rebates. But that's why I said mm -hmm. A for the sub panels, A for phase one, yeah, and B for phase two in FY whatever 25, whatever we're talking about here. FY25. I have no investments whether that second phase is a B or an A. Because by doing the sub panel, you're essentially committing yourself to the whole project. Yeah, you got it. The, yeah, you know, but you're not, to both phases of the project. Well, we're, we're not saying shut off the second yeah. phase. We're just saying yeah. it's not as right. Urgent. But then you could say what we're doing is we're splitting the risk, Fred. We're saying we uh, we, uh, we want to take we don't want to we want to yeah. capture the opportunity for phase one for the rebates right. we know, mm -hmm. and we'll take the risk for phase two by deferring it a year that we may get less or the uh, same or more. I don't know how you're holding on phase two because it's not on here. So, well, that's what an we interesting saying? question. Um, it's if, up to them to build to do their their ten year forecast. Well, they and, did give us documents on phase two. Yeah, right. They did. Why isn't that in? The, well, they gave us a three-year plan. They gave us a three-year plan. So um, what I'm oh, wondering on the, is on the original ones that we got last. Yeah, year, yeah, okay. yeah. I definitely saw there's a phase uh, one and a phase two listed. Uh, I think it was six and six. Or yeah, something. I'm sorry. Like find it in the, the exact same. It's just that. I forgot. Well, how much for phase two on the uh, mini foot? He's never got it. I'm, my memory is I'm still searching in our documents, which are now. Oh, yeah, yeah you, 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 and your, you and your little computer. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's better than paper. Yeah. You know, hey. Okay. <laughs> what was the question? Mini splits. What, what's the cost of phase two for the mini splits? Five mini split heat pumps, 55000 55,000 so phase two. Phase one was 63, phase two was 55. Okay. One less. So there's 11 total over the next two years. And the rebate was, what are they saying, 4,400? 4, yeah, 4,400. 4, 4, so you're essentially risking twenty two thousand. Uh, how many did they say for the for the uh, second phase? Five. Five, five of them. The last five. Then. Or they we didn't so know that. Five. Six in phase one and yeah. five in phase two. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm proposing is that in our final response from this auspicious committee, yeah. we yeah. insert a row in our capital project requests. After the the installation of mini split heat pumps, one of two, add a row that's two of two, and put that amount in, and add a priority B there. Yeah, we can do that. We'll pay for it. I like that idea. It's possible. Yeah. Okay. So we're saying electrical sub panels at fifty four thousand is priority A. Mini split heat, pump, heat pumps one of two for 63,000 as priority A for FY25. Yeah. And they are two of two mini split heat pumps. Five more mini splits at phase 50, 50, whatever that is, is priority B. And we'll go with that. Yep. 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 All right. Restroom flooring replacement. <laughs> That was another interesting one, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. So, so it seems like there's a fly in the ointment. There's a, there's a little concrete in the drain here. They're not yeah. compliant. Well, we were also, no, we were not confused ultimately about which bathroom we're talking about. Right. No, 
bathroom in the back of the gym. But I still don't remember how many urinals were in there. Did you get a vacuum cleaner? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Found that that page one email. No, just to confirm which bathrooms. Okay, how the flooring turned out last year? Nothing. Oh no no no, I did not. Okay. That was on uh, that arrived for Bill at the same time as the other questions, more or less, right? Yeah. He just did not address them. Flooring is okay. last year's flooring isn't done yet. The last year's flooring's not done. Well, they got the contractor back to fix it, right? Part of it. I don't know. I heard they're having trouble with it. Yeah, that's what set the fire alarm off the other day. Well, I didn't hear. Contractor was in there working on it's where the panels met the outside, the uh, some of the glue was popping up and they had to remove it because it was peeling the part, top part of the tile off. I have not heard that. That's what the fire call was for the, for the smoke for. Huh? He was in there sanding it down. They were doing it themselves. The contractor did part of it and then I don't know how. Left it to Dan to do the rest? Pardon? Left it to, to the janitor custodian? Something, something like that. I Don't quote me on that. Okay, he, he, he ended up doing it, I think. But hey, yeah, my question is still there. How many urinals? Because that has to do with the qualification. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they say right now two more urinals. There's at least one urinal, one toilet, so it qualifies. Yeah. But that's what well, I So say. your view is like mine that toilets are equivalent in this sense. Right. Well, that, that's what they say. They hear it. They say two or more urinals slash toilets. Ah, okay. The slash, we missed the slash. <laughs> so they need to, so he'll figure out if he needs a floor drain, but the request right now is just for the floor. So they may not yeah. really be able to do the floor at this proposed cost Definitely. of $10,000 if it looks like they have to spend more money on putting in operating drains. Or well, if we okay this, then they take the fixing of the floor drain out of their maintenance budget. Ah, uh, good. good. So it's really, I think, just whether it's about the flooring. Yeah. Well, I would rate Last it a year. priority A. We rated the other bat, uh, other bathroom yeah. floor repairs. Yeah. At that level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. And whether yeah. it's the right product or whether they can go ahead because of the drain. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. their issue. That, that's yeah. their issue yeah. for me. Yeah. Ultimately. I would, say, not I would say I would say an A or we they would coordinate the drain and the flooring. Okay. <laughs> well, it's good. I think it's good we asked and they're like, geez, we did it from way up with France. All right. I'm All right. I'm good with A. So let's stay at the school. Exterior door replacement. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna call that a B. B. I was not surprised to say it sounded to me like that was a kind of um Safety and security issue, a sort of urgent issue with the functionality of these exterior doors. Did I misunderstand? I would be more to find as an A also because of safety issues. If that door is is rotted that bad, maybe it would jam and try and open it in case the fire is coming. Yeah. And is there a security issue? Someone being able to get in more easily. Right. Uh, Those I are would, all good reasons. I would agree. I, I would say an A on the you know, door replacement also. Okay. A. A. I'll go with that. All right. Ceiling of library brick surfaces. I'll, I'll say a B again. My, uh... hmm. I'm good with that, but I'd like to hear your reasoning of why it's not. Like, again, there's this similar to the yellow barn. There's the kind of pay now or pay later argument here. That if you just let the weather elements continue to deteriorate the, this, this brick of the library, of kind of a crown jewel of Waitley, then, you know, you save money now, but um, cost more later when you have to repoint another stuff. 
Well, are you guys are you considering C? I'm considering A. Oh, okay. So, so I'm trying to you argue argue. I don't think that, the, I don't a. think it's going to fall down. I don't think that's we're in no, any danger of that. I mean, it's been unsealed for, for quite a while, fifty years right. or whatever since the yeah. paint was stripped. And they're just asking for it. So I, I would say A, uh, not a B, not an A. You say yeah, a B. not urgent. I would, do would agree. It's not urgent. Okay. Consensus on B. B. Uh, cemeteries purchase used truck. So I, I did have a conversation with Keith this morning, and and uh, I emailed Darcy later this afternoon after I warned she wasn't coming. And you know, the high, it seems like there's going to be vehicles available for the cemetery commissioners to use. Um, the highway department's still waiting for on the the that new F five fifty truck, so that'll free up their existing. F550 truck and also they're going to be replacing the assuming well depending on what happens after <laughs> yeah. replacing well I should say replacing I don't want to use the word replacing but they're going to be the F getting an F150 another F150 so there's there's existing vehicles that could be repurposed you know repurposed for those uses so um, initially while we're waiting for those trucks to be replaced Darcy seems to be okay with scheduling with Pete the you know, to, to get the equipment when she needs it. So um, it doesn't seem like this is needed anymore. Is so, there even just a short term rental of a truck if we needed well, to just plenty, get them to use a short term rental when you're talking highway. about a half hour's work? Yeah. Oh, oh, moving the, moving the uh, mower. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just move, yeah. moving stuff around. Or yeah. Quick. Yeah. It's not, Heavy duty use, yeah, yeah it's, it's not in the highway. Yeah. Being used. Anytime he has to do it, it's not urgent, right? Yeah. I mean, the grass needs to be cut, but hey, if you don't cut it today, you gotta go. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, gonna, the, I'm gonna get job for your goats. The yet. thing about the goats is they like browse more than grazing, so they're better, you know, if you have like rush, we'll, and we'll put some brush in the center, yeah. <laughs> But it sounds like Darcy should be able to work at a schedule with Pete. When yeah, so I'm not even sure. Not being Maybe we shouldn't even take a vote. But I guess I would say as a uh, as a need, it seems like a priority A. Like something needs to be done right. so that the mowers can be moved around. Whether purchasing the truck is needed. Uh, Maybe that that decision. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that purchasing it is an A. I think that purchasing it is a C or. Yeah. So I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe we just just request to take no action or right. thing. Um, we just table. Yeah, I would. I would agree with that. Yeah, it's more of a program. It, it it it'll be addressed sort of operationally. Not right. Yeah. With the it sounds like yeah. there's enough other. We got enough pickups yeah. to come. I think okay. we can table this and okay. wait to see what happens with this. Replacement cycle. Okay. Yeah. Will we agree on table? Yep. Yes. Yep. Replace air packs. We did. Um, yes. Highway department replace. Uh, it's so this is the F one fifty. I guess I'm going to say A on that one. Yeah. It seems. It seems like. We did A last year. They, we did do A last year. Yeah. Yeah. Not that we can't change it, but yeah. Trust the, the, the old truck hasn't gotten any better. No. Yeah. No, but the price of the new <clears throat> lightning has gone up substantially. Yeah. And that's still the right strategy to get an electric instead yeah. of a that'll be debated over the yeah. next couple of months. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But that's not for here, right? We're just talking <laughs> okay. about the need to replace yeah. okay. the F 150. All right. We're going to agree on A. Oh, we will agree on A. Okay. Same as last year at eight. Yeah, I think so. What well, replaces it will stay tuned for the next three months oh, yeah, discussion. Uh, guardrail mower attachment. Guardrail post mower attachment. What's the standard of my data me? I thought it was high priority, but uh, not not I, urgent. I would uh, I would agree with that. I, They've only lived forever without it, right. um, and, and no, nothing has happened to make it urgent. No, so we'll make it a B. Yeah. 
They need it. They need, they need it. it. It'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be, very, be very nice to have them. Make their life much easier, but is it urgent? No, probably not. Yeah, I'm just sort of, just give me a moment. Okay. <laughs> just, I'm just thinking about the, you know, the ramifications of like the impact on town staff. Like I, I sort of get the idea that it's urgent. I feel since my wife goes nuts when she gets poison ivy, you know, I just I think about it through the lens of, well, if this could, I mean, there's a lot of this stuff around, right? And if it's if poison ivy employees, yeah, well, I mean, they're talking about. It. I mean, it is an art. He's making his best arguments, which I respect for this acquisition. But if employees are dealing with using string, doing this by hand at present, using string trimmers, yeah. they are exposing themselves to, to bees and poison ivy and other kinds of, maybe that's mostly it. And as, as Nicholas said, they've been exposing themselves to this forever. Yeah. <laughs> That this is nothing new and there's no, nothing has changed to make this go from, I think, important to urgent. Except for maybe the ticks, the, the, which have gotten so much worse. Oh, uh, but yeah, the they're is, bad, but even though, you know, in, in the last year, I don't know that it's demonstrably worse than it had been. Hey, they're all allergic to them now, anyway. After you've been time here without that, you, you get a new to them. Ticks? Yeah. So am I sort of hearing a groundswell around B versus A? Yeah, I would go with B. Yeah, me too. All right, I will. I will be swayed by the my respected colleagues on the committee for B. B. All right, replace twenty seventeen. I'm Mark Police Cruiser. I would say right. Twenty seventeen. So that. Yeah. Oh, I just we had the email from the police chief. Yeah, you got an email. On. Right. That's part of our. So I guess I'm a little unclear on whether it's an A versus a B. It's certainly not a C, but is it? I think, Dan, you were sort of suggesting, well, this is sort of, this is a scheduled replacement and thus gets an A. Yeah. We do a scheduled replacement every one, two, three, four, five, six years. Okay. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So in that <clears throat> letter, he also said that the other one is coming up in two or three years. Right. So, uh, because we put money into this fund every year, right? Uh, the finance committee. So I would say if, if we blow this out a year, now you're getting uh, close to two the years away from that other one. Uh, so yeah, they have two on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. we don't want that. No. But if we say a B, that doesn't mean. No, that doesn't mean you're blowing it off. Yeah, okay. The finance yeah. will take care of that. Right. But doesn't. <clears throat> so were you advocating that this is an A or a B? Um, we, as far as this committee goes, I would say it's a B. It's a, I, don't I, see I, it's, I put down B when we discussed it last two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, it seems important, uh, yeah. but not. No, I think the only urgency is that it's on the schedule for for this year. And that's true. If you want to go by the schedule, then we should recommend it for this year. If we did it by by our, our long range planning, yes. Yeah, I, I think the finance will do that, but it's up to us whether we want to also do an A. We, we could do an A. I could, I'm halfway between A and B. So I and the, the reason it calls an A is to stick with the schedule. Yeah. And to make sure that we're not going to start, pardon the expression, piling up police cars right. on top that, of each other. That's what we don't want. Yeah, I think we should call it a B and leave it to the okay. finance committee to understand that yeah. the schedule replacement is yeah. important. I mean, I don't think that's. That's useful information, but I also feel Dan, like you're on the finance committee. Yeah. So there we have our back channel, if you will. Yeah. I would say let's just do this as a B and, 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 right. and let them take care of it as to when they want to. Yeah, I mean, there, there are lots of things which we give a grade to and then finance committee 
I would say they makes a call based on the funding. Everybody agree on the meeting? Yes, yep. yeah. Yep. Okay. Next one. The tabulators. Electronic voting tabulators. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with the C also for that. Uh, I didn't want that old wooden one yeah. to go away. You know what? I mean, that, my sister has a good job sitting there. Right. You know? Well, yeah, but then the historical society is always looking for new acquisitions. <laughs> Yeah, and call it at some point in the next five years, yeah. it'll become a mandate to right. change, and we'll do it then. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm sure at some point, electronic regimes will I'm, I'm will be a state mandate. Everybody agree? See, right? See. See. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure the select board and finance committee will get lobbied hard, <laughs> but it is what it is. Stock replacement savings. We don't usually. Rate this, I don't believe, right? Um, I, we, I seem to have an A written down from the previous years, but it could be that was just my for which one for water department, water department truck. Truck savings. We give a thumbs up, a lot of thumbs up rating. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm writing down an A. That's an entity for their own, so I, I don't, I don't even know why we even have to vote on that. But I guess, yeah, I don't know why I got yeah, that's one. But Brian puts it on the form, well, it's it's on the memo. That's why. Because it, it reminds me to put it on the warrant. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have to do it. Right. No action. Oh, right. And then the other ones, I mean, we don't, we, we don't have much control over these um, because some of these are going to be like the scams, the scams is going to be an assessment and, you know, the senior service. Scams will hopefully be a grant that will help me out. Yeah. I'm sorry, did did I miss the, or did we decide this whole Tritown Beach thing? Did I just miss that? I was. No, we're just saying we didn't. We don't have to deal with that. We don't have to. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so the one that I, that I, that I forgot to put on previously was the, the town hall exterior, you know, painting and repairs. Oh, right. Um. Was that an FY25 request? Yeah, I, I, and I forgot to distribute that. It's included on here. So what's happening is, and I, I, I don't have the cost estimate for it yet. Um, the north side of the town hall, so the post office side, uh, that paint has been peeling off because it doesn't get any sunlight. So the moisture just stays there. Mm -hmm. um, and it was not part of the 2018 rehab. The, the building was not repainted. It was repainted in 2014, maybe yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm no building expert. So, so the Neil uh, Neil Abrams, the, the town hall steward or whatever that uh, title is, he's the one who brought it to my case of painting. That he's, I think he's been doing scraping and painting along the lower parts. But and and I can't tell from from ground height, but there's a lot of black looking spaces around the sort of the edge of the roof, mm -hmm. uh, and I can't tell if that's rot or missing pieces of wood. I, I, it just it's probably bold because of the dripping. Um, of the slate. But it looks it it's it's in pretty rough shape that side. If, if you get a chance, to, if you're at the post office, you look up. Um, it, it it really needs to be scraped and painted. Well, maybe it needs more than paint. It could in some spots. It could need it could need more than paint. But I think we, for that we need a more detailed request. Yeah, and it may need some work. And that would require historical level repair and renovation versus just getting a regular. Like, isn't it a historical building? This, yeah, it's on the. It's you on can't the, just. It is. It yeah. can't, you can't, it would have to be handled more specially yeah. than just getting some painter to come yeah. paint it, right? If you have to replace pieces. Or yeah, not. it needs to be. It, I'm sort of looking yeah. at you because I think I would say um, it's uh, you know it's an old building, but it it's a building like many others, and okay. so many yeah. contractors could okay could address the issues, assuming they're not 
structural, which we really, really hope they're not. Yeah. I mean, I think they're just exterior details. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you want to go look at it, we get the fire department for the ladder report. <laughs> oh, sir. Yeah. Uh, but don't you use that post office? I know they would do that. I'm there frequently, yes. So just look up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 could notice that. I have not noticed it. I've noticed Neil scraping and repriming yeah. yeah. the first eight feet. Okay, on the, uh, on the north side. On the north side. Yeah. Yeah. But if you if you you uh, was where you want to take okay. a look at it for us, just get a hold of JP. Get a look. Okay. One of the boys or Dwayne or Wayne or somebody will come up with stuff in the lab. They can help you set it up. And you can try so this is not anything part. we can act on tonight. No, it's, really, but it's, uh, it's a need to do that so they can make a decision as to. What, what needs to be done? Whether they want to paint or whether they need yeah. to care. Yeah. It's a need that may come that up first. between right. the end of this meeting and next year, maybe, right. depending on yeah. what's discovered. Okay. Well, yeah, I just want to say, are you suggesting there might be an ad hoc meeting of this committee sometime before this next town meeting to review a more specific proposal so you could get it on and get it potentially approved at this town meeting? Uh, Possibly, I would I would defer to what the select board would want to do at that point. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just think we need more information on exactly what is required here. Yeah. Yeah. So if he's willing to take a look at it, then make a determination as to how deep this project. Is. Right. Yeah. At the very least, it needs to be scraped. You know, yeah. It's just whether it's worse or not. Let's go back to our uh, our ones down with it. I would. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> that's not. Go back to what? That's not. <laughs> oh, there's a, must be a story there. Oh, there's a story there. Yeah. <laughs> not, for this, not for this. All right. So, do we recap and just review, or we we, we vote on everything as a one swell loop? Let's put it this way: we got two C's, first and last. Yeah. And we've got uh, one, two. I think you should just read the B. Three, four Bs, and the rest. No, of we actually went fifth. Phase two on the. Phase two is a B, so we have five Bs. Yeah. Right. The rest of it. Table to use truck for the cemetery. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, we're on the same page. All right. I move we. Uh, there you go. We vote as just detailed by Dan a moment ago. Second. All right. Uh, a motion to approve as we just read. Uh, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. You know, Another successful year. I was thinking as I we look back through the year, the past year, it's, uh, I don't know how much of a pain, Brian, this would be for you. But um, I ended up, you know, coming around and being like, well, what ended up happening with the things that we voted on last year, the year before, the year? Like, I, I lose track of the projects, Dan. Yeah. He's in the finance committee. Yeah. I know I go to town meeting and I should know mostly what happens, but in the end, I don't necessarily know which things got funded. Yeah. Well, yeah. in general, the things that didn't get funded, we see again. Okay, at the point. <laughs> so if you look at the end of that capital plan, yeah. that draft capital plan, I think it's the last worksheet. This is the Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, the Excel spreadsheet. Okay. I think it's the last one. Um, it lists well, the expenditures. What got spent on what, what, what was approved and the percentage complete. Okay. I try to keep that. Okay. But, all right. I, so I can, if I dig through the Excel sheet, I can find yeah. all that info. Yeah. yeah. And any questions you have, let me know because I yeah. probably know a little okay. bit more detail about it. So, this sort of riffing on got it, was this was point, not, though, yeah, yeah, I think I it's, that. it's a, I feel like, yeah. and I know yeah. it's we're a small town and, you know, be, be careful what you ask, mm -hmm. but it seems like if every department or what whomever every requester who gets this funding, they should be obliged to provide a report, a brief report at the end of the fiscal year that says we we spent this amount and we completed this project and with some like because it often feels like part of our job. Well, 
I mean, it, maybe it, we don't. Maybe it, we it would be nice if that if that stuff was included in the annual report. Yeah, in the right. annual report booklet, like yeah, yeah. usually when you, the departments give a summary of the operations from the past year, yeah. it's something you think you might want to see in there. Yes. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, projects. But then again, it's sort of them. like I'm not even sure who controls the annual report. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Who's the editor? Does anyone yeah. control yeah. anyone control yeah. the annual report or just yeah. submissions yeah. that are just, you know, piles it? Somebody yeah. just piles yeah. the annual report. I don't know. Hey, it could be could be a suggestion that right? although I think that's not up in the book. What you know, maybe we need to center my job. What should be in the annual report? Yeah. Uh -huh. I've never, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, so. yeah. But, I mean, maybe arguably we don't need to know that. We just consider the new request before us. But sometimes it seems like to assess whether a project is worthwhile, there's a sense of track record. Like with the restroom flooring replacements, like, well, what happened in the past? How yeah. much did they really spend? It's, it is, well, it's easy not to be in the loop, you know, yeah, to but, miss out what's going on. That's right? the one that I... Those are the ones that I know the least about, and I have to expertly ask. Other than I see the, I mean, I see the invoices come through, so I know that you money know, was spent. It's been done, and money's been spent. Um, well, but, yeah, especially for things like repairs, he sends it's hard to do. Uh, we get that you know, after the fact. Month, right? You know, yeah. let's say we authorize the yeah. barn repairs, and they get done. And what annual report next year? The barn didn't fall down. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Well, it's true, but the um, yeah. historical commission could right. could could note that those repairs were done. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, there's. I think the other thing we're dealing with is there are all of these requests mm -hmm. request certain amounts, and then they build in some margin. Like even just getting a, a sense of what are they requesting and what are they actually spending relative, and how often. Do the well. The, the request for money should be based on good estimates, and yeah. then those amounts are approved by town meeting. You know, whatever sure. the project, you know, and they can't overspend town meeting. There's no provision for cost overruns. Um, so you know, presumably we, we've got the amount that they're spending yeah. from anything left over goes back. Anything left over goes into free cash. Okay. That's that's what we don't really get a report on. You know? Right. Tell much goes back to free cash. Yeah, but yeah. we get the report on the like on this one, the percentage spent on every one of yeah. those items. So you can figure it out. Right. But if this is no question of authorizing fifty thousand and they spent six yeah. because they we, can't, we, if they, they can't, needed sixty, they, they would have to come back yeah. right. for another ten. Right. Okay. All right. That was interesting. Um, move to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> Bye. All right. I'll All, right. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Very good, gentlemen. Next year, I guess.